Chavaka IAST Kavaka, originally known as Lokayata and Braspatya, is the ancient school of Indian materialism. Chavaka holds direct perception, empiricism, and conditional inference as proper sources of knowledge, embraces philosophical skepticism and rejects Vedas, Vedic ritualism, and supernaturalism. Ajita Kesakambali is credited as the forerunner of the Chavakas, while Bhati is usually referred to as the founder of Chavaka or Lokayata philosophy. Much of the primary literature of Chavaka, the Bahaspatya Sutras, ca. 600 BCE, are missing or lost. Its teachings have been compiled from historic secondary literature such as those found in the Shastras, Sutras, and the Indian epic poetry as well as in the dialogues of Gautama Buddha and from Jain literature. One of the widely studied principles of Chavaka philosophy was its rejection of inference as a means to establish valid, universal knowledge, and metaphysical truths. In other words, the Chavaka epistemology states that whenever one infers a truth from a set of observations or truths, one must acknowledge doubt. Inferred knowledge is conditional. Chavaka is categorized as a heterodox school of Indian philosophy. It is considered an example of atheistic schools in the Hindu tradition. Topic Etymology and Meaning The etymology of Chavaka Sanskrit, Kavaka is uncertain. Bhattacharya quotes the grammarian Hemakandra, to the effect that the word Kavaka is derived from the root carv, to chew, which he misspells as kava, a kavaka chews the self. Hemakandra refers to his own grammatical work, Unadasutra 37, which runs as follows, Mavaka Siyamaka Vartaka Jontaka Guvaka Badrakadaya. Each of these words ends with the aka suffix and is formed irregularly. This may also allude to the philosophy's hedonistic precepts of eat, drink, and be merry. Others believe it to mean agreeable speech, or pejoratively, sweet tongued, from Sanskrit's karu, agreeable, and vak, speech, which becomes vak in the nominative singular and in compounds. Yet another hypothesis is that it is eponymous, with the founder of the school being Chavaka, a disciple of Bryaspati. Topic: <laughs> As Lokayata. According to Chattopadhyaya 1992, p. 1, the traditional name of Chavaka is Lokayata. It was called Lokayata because it was prevalent among the people and meant the world outlook of the people. The dictionary meaning of Lokayata, Lokayata signifies directed towards, aiming at the world, worldly." In early to mid-20th century literature, the etymology of Lokayata has been given different interpretations, in part because the primary sources are unavailable, and the meaning has been deduced from divergent secondary literature. The name Lokayata, for example, is found in Chanakya's Arthashastra, which refers to three Anviksikas, Anviksiki literally, examining by reason, logical philosophies, yoga, samkhya and Lokayata. However, Lokayata in the Arthashastra is not anti-Vedic, but implies Lokayata to be a part of Vedic law. 
Lokiata here refers to logic or science of debate, disputatio, criticism. Rudolf Franke translated Lokiata in German as logisch beweisende Naturerklärung, that is, logically proving explanation of nature. In 8th century CE Jaina literature, Siddhasanasamukkaya by Haravadra, Lokiata is stated to be the Hindu school where there is no god, no samsara, rebirth, no karma, no duty, no fruits of merit, no sin. The Buddhist Sanskrit work Divyavadana CA 200 to 350 CE mentions Lokiata, where it is listed among subjects of study and with the sense of technical logical science. Shantarakshita and Adi Shankara use the word Lokiata to mean materialism, with the latter using the term Lokiata, not Chavaka. The terms Lokiata and Braspatya have been used interchangeably for the Chavaka philosophy of materialism. Origin. <inaudible> 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 The tenets of the Chavaka atheistic doctrines can be traced to the relatively later composed layers of the Rigveda, while substantial discussions on the Chavaka is found in post-Vedic literature. The primary literature of Chavaka, such as the Braspati Sutra is missing or lost. Its theories and development has been compiled from historic secondary literature such as those found in the Shastras such as the Arthashastra, Sutras and the Epics the Mahabharata and Ramayana of Hinduism as well as from the dialogues of Gautama Buddha and Jain literature. Substantial discussions about the Chavaka doctrines are only found in texts after 600 BCE. Bhattacharya posits that Chavaka may have been one of several atheistic, materialist schools that existed in ancient India. Though there is evidence of its development in Vedic era, Chavaka emerged as an alternative to the Astaka schools as well as a philosophical predecessor to subsequent or contemporaneous philosophies such as Ajnana, Ajivika, Jainism, and Buddhism in the classical period of Indian philosophy. The earliest documented Chavaka scholar in India is Ajita Kesakambali. Although materialist schools existed before Chavaka, it was the only school which systematized materialist philosophy by setting them down in the form of aphorisms in the 6th century BC. There was a base text, a collection sutras or aphorisms and several commentaries were written to explicate the aphorisms, e. W. Hopkins, in his The Ethics of India 1924, claims that Chavaka philosophy was contemporaneous to Jainism and Buddhism, mentioning, "...the old Kavaka or materialist of the 6th century BC." Rhys Davids assumes that Lokiata in ca. 500 BC came to mean, skepticism in general without yet being organized as a philosophical school its methodology of skepticism is included in the ramayana ayodhya kanda chapter 108 where jabali tries to persuade rama to accept the kingdom by using nastika arguments rama refutes him in chapter 109 O, oh, the highly wise. Arrive at a conclusion, therefore, that there is nothing beyond this universe. Give precedence to that which meets the eye and turn your back on what is beyond our knowledge. 2.108.17 
There are alternate theories behind the origins of Charvaka. Brisbati is sometimes referred to as the founder of Charvaka or Lokiata philosophy. Billington 1997, p. 43 states that a philosopher named Charvaka lived in or about the 6th century BC, who developed the premises of this Indian philosophy in the form of Brisbati Sutra. These sutras predate 150 BC, because they are mentioned in the Mahabhasya 7.3.45, Basham 1981, pp. 11-17, citing the Buddhist Samanafala Sutta, suggests six schools of heterodox, pre-Buddhist and pre-Jain, atheistic Indian traditions in 6th century BCE, that included Charvaka and Ajavikas. Charvaka was a living philosophy up to the 12th century in India's historical timeline, after which this system seems to have disappeared without leaving any trace. Philosophy <laughs> 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 The Charvaka school of philosophy had a variety of atheistic and materialistic beliefs. They held perception to be the valid and reliable source of knowledge. <laughs> Epistemology The Charvaka epistemology holds perception as the primary and proper source of knowledge, while inference is held as prone to being either right or wrong and therefore conditional or invalid. Perceptions are of two types, for Charvaka, external and internal. External perception is described as that arising from the interaction of five senses and worldly objects, while internal perception is described by this school as that of inner sense, the mind. Inference is described as deriving a new conclusion and truth from one or more observations and previous truths. To Charvakas, inference is useful but prone to error, as inferred truths can never be without doubt. Inference is good and helpful, it is the validity of inference that is suspect, sometimes in certain cases and often in others. To the Charvakas there were no reliable means by which the efficacy of inference as a means of knowledge could be established. Charvakas' epistemological argument can be explained with the example of fire and smoke. Kamal states that when there is smoke middle term, one's tendency may be to leap to the conclusion that it must be caused by fire major term in logic. While this is often true, it need not be universally true, everywhere or all the times, stated the Charvaka scholars. Smoke can have other causes. In Charvaka epistemology, as long as the relation between two phenomena, or observation and truth, has not been proven as unconditional, it is an uncertain truth. Such methods of reasoning, that is jumping to conclusions or inference, is prone to flaw in this Indian philosophy. Charvakas further state that full knowledge is reached when we know all observations, all premises and all conditions. But the absence of conditions, state Charvakas, can not be established beyond doubt by perception, as some conditions may be hidden or escape our ability to observe. They acknowledge that every person relies on inference in daily life, but to them if we act uncritically, we are. While our inferences sometimes are true and lead to successful action, it is also a fact that sometimes inference is wrong and leads to error. 
Truth then, state Chavaka, is not an unfailing character of inference, truth is merely an accident of inference, and one that is separable. We must be skeptics, question what we know by inference, question our epistemology. This epistemological proposition of Chavaka's was influential among various schools of in Indian philosophies, by demonstrating a new way of thinking and re evaluation of past doctrines. Hindu, Buddhist and Jain scholars extensively deployed Chavaka insights on inference in rational re-examination of their own theories. <laughs> Comparison with other schools of Hinduism Chavaka epistemology represents minimalist pramanas epistemological methods in Hindu philosophy. The other schools of Hinduism developed and accepted multiple valid forms of epistemology. To Chavaka's, pratyaksa perception was the one valid way to knowledge and other means of knowledge were either always conditional or invalid. Advaita Vedanta scholars considered six means of valid knowledge and to truths, pratyaksa perception, anumana inference, upamana comparison and analogy, arthapati postulation, anupalabdi non-perception, cognitive proof and sabda word, testimony of past or present reliable experts. While Chavaka school accepted just one, the valid means of epistemology in other schools of Hinduism ranged between two and six. <laughs> Metaphysics Since none of the means of knowing were found to be worthy to establish the invariable connection between middle term and predicate, Charvakas concluded that the inference could not be used to ascertain metaphysical truths. Thus, to Charvakas, the step which the mind takes from the knowledge of something to infer the knowledge of something else could be accounted for by its being based on a former perception or by its being in error. Cases where inference was justified by the result were seen only to be mere coincidences, therefore, Charvakas denied metaphysical concepts like reincarnation, an extracorporeal soul, the efficacy of religious rites, other worlds, heaven and hell, fate and accumulation of merit or demerit through the performance of certain actions. Charvakas also rejected the use of supernatural causes to describe natural phenomena. To them all natural phenomena was produced spontaneously from the inherent nature of things. The fire is hot, the water cold, refreshing cool the breeze of morn, by whom came this variety, from their own nature was it born. Topic. Consciousness and afterlife The Chavaka did not believe in karma, rebirth or an afterlife. To them, all attributes that represented a person, such as thinness, fatness etc., resided in the body. The Sarvajadanta Samgraha states the Chavaka position as follows. There is no other world other than this. There is no heaven and no hell. The realm of Shiva and like regions are fabricated by stupid impostors. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Pleasure. Chavaka believed that there was nothing wrong with sensual pleasure. 
Since it is impossible to have pleasure without pain, Charvaka thought that wisdom lay in enjoying pleasure and avoiding pain as far as possible. Unlike many of the Indian philosophies of the time, Charvaka did not believe in austerities or rejecting pleasure out of fear of pain and held such reasoning to be foolish. The Sarvajadanta Samgraha states the Charvaka position on pleasure and hedonism as follows The enjoyment of heaven lies in eating delicious food, keeping company of young women, using fine clothes perfumes, garlands, sandal paste, while moksha is death which is cessation of life breath. The wise therefore ought not to take pains on account of moksha. A fool wears himself out by penances and fasts. Chastity and other such ordinances are laid down by clever weaklings. Religion Charvakas rejected many of the standard religious conceptions of Hindus, Buddhists and Jains, such as an afterlife, reincarnation, samsara, karma and religious rites. They were critical of the Vedas, as well as Buddhist scriptures. The Sarvadasana Samgraha, with commentaries by Madhavacharya, describes the Charvakas as critical of the Vedas, materialists without morals and ethics. To Charvakas, the text states, the Vedas suffered from several faults, errors in transmission across generations, untruth, self-contradiction and tautology. The Charvakas pointed out the disagreements, debates and mutual rejection by Karmakanda Vedic priests and Junanakanda Vedic priests, as proof that either one of them is wrong or both are wrong, as both cannot be right. Charvakas, according to Sarvadasana Samgraha verses 10 and 11, declared the Vedas to be incoherent rhapsodies whose only usefulness was to provide livelihood to priests. They also held the belief that Vedas were invented by man, and had no divine authority. Charvakas rejected the need for ethics or morals, and suggested that, While life remains, let a man live happily, let him feed on ghee even though he runs in debt. The Jain scholar Haravadra, in the last section of his text Siddhasanasamukhaya, includes Charvaka in his list of six darsanas of Indian traditions, along with Buddhism, Nyaya Vaisheshika, Samkhya, Jainism and Jaiminiya. Haravadra notes that Charvakas assert that there is nothing beyond the senses, consciousness is an emergent property, and that it is foolish to seek what cannot be seen. The accuracy of these views, attributed to Charvakas, has been contested by scholars. Works <laughs> <laughs> No independent works on Charvaka philosophy can be found except for a few sutras composed by Bryaspati. The 8th century Tattvopaplav Simha of Jayarasi Bhatta with Madhyamaka influence is a significant source of Charvaka philosophy. Shatdarshan Samuchi and Sarvadasanasa Graha of Vidyaranya are a few other works which elucidate Charvaka thought. In the epic Mahabharata, Book 12, Chapter 39, a villain who dresses up like a scholar, appoints himself as spokesperson for all scholars, and who then advises Yudhishthira to act unethically, is named Charvaka. One of the widely studied references 
opposed to the Charvaka philosophy is the Sarva Dasana Sangraha, etymologically all philosophy collection, a famous work of 14th century Advaita Vedanta philosopher Madhava Vidyaranya from South India, which starts with a chapter on the Charvaka system. After invoking, in the prologue of the book, the Hindu gods Shiva and Vishnu, by whom the earth and rest were produced, Vidyaranya asks, in the first chapter, Sanskrit poems and plays like the Nisada Karita, Prabodha Kandrodaya, Agama Dambara, Vidvanmoda Tarangini and Kadambari contain representations of the Charvaka thought. However, the authors of these works were thoroughly opposed to materialism and tried to portray the Charvaka in unfavorable light. Therefore, their works should only be accepted critically. <laughs> Loss of original works There was no continuity in the Charvaka tradition after the 12th century. Whatever is written on Charvaka posts this is based on second-hand knowledge, learned from preceptors to disciples and no independent works on Charvaka philosophy can be found. Chatterjee and Dutta explain that our understanding of Charvaka philosophy is fragmentary, based largely on criticism of its ideas by other schools, and that it is not a living tradition. Though materialism in some form or other has always been present in India, and occasional references are found in the Vedas, the Buddhistic literature, the epics, as well as in the later philosophical works we do not find any systematic work on materialism, nor any organized school of followers as the other philosophical schools possess. But almost every work of the other schools states, for refutation, the materialistic views. Our knowledge of Indian materialism is chiefly based on these. <laughs> Controversy on reliability of sources Bhattacharya 2011, pp. 10, 29-32 states that the claims against Charvaka of hedonism, lack of any morality and ethics and disregard for spirituality is from texts of competing religious philosophies Buddhism, Jainism and Hinduism. Its primary sources, along with commentaries by Charvaka scholars is missing or lost. This reliance on indirect sources raises the question of reliability and whether there was a bias and exaggeration in representing the views of Charvakas. Bhattacharya points out that multiple manuscripts are inconsistent, with key passages alleging hedonism and immorality missing in many manuscripts of the same text. The Skeleta Pramathana Yuktihita Siddhi by Arya Devapada, in a manuscript found in Tibet, discusses the Charvaka philosophy, but attributes a theistic claim to Charvakas that happiness in this life, and the only life, can be attained by worshipping gods and defeating demons. Toso posits that as Charvaka philosophy's views spread and were widely discussed, non-Charvakas such as Arya Devapada added certain points of view that may not be of the Charvakas, Buddhists, Jains, Advaita Vedantins and Nyaya philosophers considered the Charvakas as one of their opponents and tried to refute their views. These refutations are indirect sources of Charvaka philosophy. The arguments and reasoning approach Charvakas deployed were significant that they continued to be referred to, even after all the authentic Charvaka, Lokyata texts had been lost. 
However, the representation of the Charvaka thought in these works is not always firmly grounded in first-hand knowledge of Charvaka texts and should be viewed critically. Likewise, states Bhattacharya, the charge of hedonism against Charvaka might have been exaggerated. Countering the argument that the Charvakas opposed all that was good in the Vedic tradition, Reaper 1964, p. 75 states, it may be said from the available material that Karvakas hold truth, integrity, consistency, and freedom of thought in the highest esteem. Criticism from Abrahamic philosophers An I Akbari, a record of the Mughal Emperor Akbar's court, mentions a symposium of philosophers of all faiths held in 1578 at Akbar's insistence, also see Sen 2005, pp. 288-289. In the text, the Mughal historian Abu Fazl ibn Mubarak summarizes the Charvaka philosophy as unenlightened and characterizes their works of literature as lasting memorials to their ignorance. He notes that Charvakas considered paradise as the state in which man lives as he chooses, without control of another while hell is the state in which he lives subject to another's rule. On statecraft, Charvakas believe, states Mubarak, that it is best when knowledge of just administration and benevolent government is practiced. See also Ajnana Cyrenaics Dabiprasad Chattopadhyaya Lokayata, a study in ancient Indian materialism Positivism Sramana Notes Topic Bibliography Topic Further reading Topic External Links The Lokayata, Nastika and Karvaka, Surendranath Dasgupta, 1940 Jayarasi, a 9th-century Indian philosopher associated with Karvaka, Lokayata School, Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, 2011 Lokayata, Karvaka, Indian Materialism Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy Materialism in India, a synoptic view Ramkrishna Bhattacharya Bibliography, Karvaka, Lokayata Secondary Literature, Karl Potter, University of Washington